I connected with the people uh, where I wanted, I felt a bit of a responsibility. Well, I think women around the world, they all have pretty much the same struggle. They do want that my brand as a brand name should be a household brand name. Hello everyone, welcome to Success Stories Talk Show Season 2 presented by Trident Communications in association with World Humanitarian Foundation. I'm Malika, your host for today, and uh, as our guest of today, we have Nadia Hussain Khan. She is a Pakistani television actress, host, supermodel, entrepreneur, and a fashion designer. She's also recognized as one of Pakistan's first supermodels. So, hello, Nadia, how are you? Hello, very well, thank you. And welcome to our show, Success Stories. Thank you, thank you very much for having me. So Nadia, as we saw your Wikipedia and your profile, so you are a very versatile personality. And as per Wikipedia, you are a supermodel, a host, actress, swimmer, dentist, airline pilot, and a lot more. So how did this journey start? Like, what was the first time that you realized that you could get into acting and it happened? No, I'm not an airline pilot from anywhere. I think that is wrong information. Um, All right. But I am a dentist. I'm a qualified dentist. And uh, so apart from that, I also started modeling. And uh, that is how I was doing both things. And while I was modeling, I got the offer to do acting. So I started doing acting while I was also studying to be a dentist. And uh, then I, you know, was uh, also, of course, during the time that I was acting, I was getting offers for hosting. So I started doing that. And uh, then I also started, then I got married and uh, I had children. So, you know, my dentistry part finished. I didn't really continue in that field as a dentist. Uh, I worked for a little while, uh, but then I had my first baby. Then I thought, okay, should I work right now as a dentist? You know, what should I do? So I instead continued modeling. And then I had the second baby. And that's when I started getting offers for doing uh, endorsements under my name, you know? So I started using my name as a brand. And, um, and then I, I did lawn. Uh, which is basically like, you know, these three piece suits, which you have. Uh, so I started doing lawn and then I started doing shoes and uh, which was all basically my name was being used, you know, like it was somebody else's investment and everything, but it was my name. It was my brand. And uh, that is how I started getting into entrepreneurship, you know, and uh, then finally I started my own salon and now I have my own makeup brand, which is by my, which is my own. Only. All right. So everyone has a dream career. So with the amount of versatility that you have, which one was actually the dream career and which one just happened to be that? Well, uh, my dream career was so called my dentistry and what happened to just happen was my modeling, you know, uh, oh. that is exactly how it was because the, the dream was never really, and the focus was never really to become a model and to be in this in the industry. But of course, uh, because as I, I was getting so much popularity, that is how I eventually continued to be in this field. So as you said, that modeling just happened to be there. So what was the first modeling assignment that you got and what kind of struggles did you face in that journey? So the first assignment that I ever did was, uh, it was a campaign for a uh, winter wear collection, uh, which was all like in, uh, in, uh, in, in linens, you know, so it was like thick linens and, you know, like woolen shawls. And uh, so it was a winter collection and uh, that was the first shoot that I ever did and as a model and uh, it was uh, really, really uh, interesting. It was really fun, but I was happy actually that the people who I was working with were really nice. They were wonderful people and uh, the photographer was also very good. The photographer's wife was the makeup artist. So she was also, you know, like very good. It was the first time that I was doing this and I had no idea about makeup. I had no idea about hair. I mean, you know, it was very, very, it was all very new to me and I didn't even have like proper shoes. Uh, it was very, very new and it was very, uh, it was a lot of fun. 
um uh, and it taught me a lot you know because i was totally so new i didn't know how to model and you know i was getting a bit awkward at times you know so like the people who i was working with they were very nice so i'm very grateful for that all right so it so happens that when someone steps into modeling the next step is usually tv shows so how did you get into tv and what were the struggles that happened while trying to get into the tv show okay so um there wasn't too much struggle because uh i when i was doing my modeling uh i got offered by uh, a channel to start hosting so um hosting also was something that i'd never done before i didn't really know how to you know like communicate with the camera i was very uh, i was not camera shy but i had a i had a speech problem because every single time i would end up talking in english and it yeah. would automatically be that i would end up talking in english and you know um that was a big problem because i had to overcome that there was a whole script and i had too many problems um remember remembering the script and i couldn't remember it it used to take hours and hours for me to do one recording and it used to be really really difficult and then i used to tell you know the the script uh, team i used to say that please make it easier for me because i cannot say these words i mean you know like the flow is a bit difficult so please make it easier for me and um but the people again who i was working with one of them was a friend the script writer actually was a friend so he really uh, you know like uh, 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 he really worked around it and uh, the again the, the director also was somebody who was very good he was very uh, he was willing to work with me so you know like when you have people of that sort who are willing to work with you it really gives you that boost and it gives you that comfort you know where you can learn uh, so that is what happened with me and when i got into tv when i got into acting that was because i was doing a program which was for uh, it was a program which was sponsored by lux and um, it, it was called lux style ki duniya and in that i was actually modeling and it was an interview program of mine and so i was modeling and it was my interview and the director of that program he said that you know i am doing an uh, a television serial which i will be recording in a couple of months and i want you to be in that serial so i said i'm not interested in acting you know like i don't want to act i'm not interested i've never done acting before i don't want to do it and i, I since i was studying i was in my second year at that time so i said that you know i have my exams coming up and i'm not interested so he said okay doesn't matter i will wait for you when your exams are done i'm going to wait till your exams are done and you have to do this project so i was like okay i mean you know like i didn't know how to say no then i just i just had to say yes to him so that's how i got into acting all right so of all the shows that you did like one after the other when the show started happening which was the show that gave you the recognition you know the fame that everyone knows that okay this is nadia so which was that show I think it was my first ever drama uh, because at that time there weren't too many channels there were very few channels and this was the one channel that was very popular and uh, it was very popular with the youth and uh, because it was a private channel you know they could air lots of fun content you know so they could air lots of things that were not really on air on the national television so the i was hosting on that same channel so because of that i got a lot of popularity because i was myself i was nadia hussain you know i was not anybody else so because of the hosting i got the popularity and on that same channel then i did this project and so when i got into acting you know like automatically people knew that oh this is nadia hussain that you know now she start acting so um that is i think the first one did give me a lot of fame all right so can you please name some of the projects which you know have been really close to your heart and have been your favorite um the recent one that i did jalan was very good uh it was uh, lots of fun i had a long i had a really good time doing that it, it gained a lot of popularity uh jalan was very good then uh, another project of mine which was again in the beginning the first project i would say yes sarmaya was my first project the second project was peri yo love hua that was very popular then i did another one mane na ye dil i did gyariya uh, these were very popular again for another private channel and again very popular plays uh, you know and uh, then i did um, 
another serial which was uh, called uh, lady spark which was for uh, another channel again a private channel very big private channel very big production very big cast um so in that i was one of the cast as well you know so that was very popular so lady spark was very good as well uh so yeah you know there've been quite a few projects all right so there's there has been a lot and usually it so happens that because of time constraints we do not get time, enough time to do things that we actually are passionate about but recently nature just gave us a lot of time when the pandemic happened and people started discovering their passions and they started working on it during the lockdown so is there something that you did as well something that you discovered about yourself or some passion that you wanted to follow for a really long time and you finally got the time to do it you know i think that i connected with the people uh, where i wanted i felt a bit of a responsibility to give some kind of um, something to look forward to for the people so i started doing these 5 minute makeup challenges uh, which i i think i am the first ever maybe in the whole world who was doing this live on instagram with another person so there has been 5 minute makeup challenges where the people where the women have done the makeup on their on themselves but not as a challenge with somebody else so uh, when i started searching on youtube when i started searching on instagram i saw a lot of 5 minute challenges but there was nothing that was with another person so i started doing that and uh, it was it went crazy i mean it went viral like crazy and many people you know like i was getting offers i was getting so many requests you know i was on a daily basis i was doing two two challenges so because we were home there was nothing else to do so i used to do one in the afternoon i used to do take off my makeup and i used to do one at night so every single day i was doing two two challenges and yet i had so many requests that i used to think oh my god if i am going to be doing every single request i'm going to be booked for the next two years like there were that many requests you know so i used to go mad i used to think oh my god this has gone so crazy that all of these women you know want to do this challenge with me and at that time in the beginning i didn't really focus on the number of followers that they had i used just used to say okay fine yes i used to say yes to everybody because there was nothing else to do so i was like okay you know whoever wants to do the challenge with me i'll do it then when i started realizing that this is like going a bit too crazy sometimes women only have 10 followers sometimes you know like some people have 1000 followers so i used to then i started saying that i am going to limit it to the people who have at least about 2000 followers so i started limiting it you know i started saying i'm really sorry i can't do it because this is really insane i cannot every single day twice a day i'm doing makeup and my skin started breaking out a little bit you know so i had to really thoroughly cleanse my face all the time so yeah but it was lots of fun because i started connecting with so many people and uh, you know i was doing something that i enjoyed doing because i enjoyed doing that challenge you know finishing my makeup in 5 minutes so it was it was fun so you did something that you really wanted to do and as you mentioned that you started off really when you were all you were studying your career started off right then so in yes. this journey who has been your biggest support and inspiration i would say my inspiration has been any woman who's ever been successful because uh, i've always looked up to successful women and it has not been one person it could be anybody who's been successful and successful at anything that they do so it's not even necessarily related to media it could be related to the finance industry it could be related to the music industry it could be related to anything i mean anybody who's been successful uh you know i have wanted to know their struggles i wanted to know what it is that they've done and uh, you know how is it that they've done it and uh, that's just given me some kind of uh, motivation to learn something from their experience all right so what are your views about passion struggle and success i think that um uh, if you're passionate about anything you don't feel the struggle at all uh, because it's all a learning process <clears throat> and um, i think success is only what 
you feel uh, you have achieved that is your success you know uh, where you are if you've achieved whatever you wanted to achieve you've been successful and so it could be anything it could be a small goal it could be a big goal if you have achieved what you wanted to achieve even if it's for that day if you wanted to achieve a certain task and you've achieved it it's success so that's how i look at it all right nadia so with all the information that we have had till now with you on this talk show so you said that things started happening one after the other it, it was just in the pipeline that you know it started flowing really smooth but ups and downs are a part of life and you have had your downs as well so when you had your ups and downs how did you deal with them so um i would say i had my downs after i had my babies you know because it was i was not really physically fit to go back into the modeling field or to go back into you know the, the dramas and all that and i would be avoiding it um so you know during that time i uh, was of course i mean the focus was the baby because i had, i mean you know i couldn't possibly focus on anything else uh but you know like that also gave me the motivation to um to you know work on myself and to get back into it so again that was success because when i worked on myself i worked hard <clears throat> the weight that i wanted to lose you know like um, it wasn't easy of course it's not easy after a baby to lose weight and uh, you know to see a body a certain way and uh, you know so like when when i worked on that and i got back into the industry that was you know like uh, a, a very big uh, i would say for me it was a big pat on the back that i felt good about myself that you know i'm back in the industry even after having the babies and you know gaining weight and then losing weight and and all of that so i of course i mean you know it just gave me that motivation then all right so there's something that i have discovered about you throughout this talk show that you never like to be stopped you always want something happening so are there other things in the pipeline or future projects that you would like to share with our audience well i do want that my brand as a brand name should be a household brand name uh which is going to be a full complete lifestyle brand so i do want that i do hope for that i do envision that uh you know to have like a, a whole range of products which uh, uh you know caters to everything caters to the entire lifestyle so like from clothes to shoes to you know like um, perfumes and uh, hair care body care makeup everything i mean you know to have like an entire lifestyle brand all right so all the very best for that and we hope that it hits the markets and it's like really successful thank you so nadia as you said that uh, you have your kids and there's a family so how do you balance your personal and professional life so i do have a very supporting husband i do have supportive family as well and that really 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 helps uh when my kids were much younger when my older kids were younger i would leave them um <clears throat> i would leave them pretty much for the whole day with my mother <clears throat> yeah i would leave them the whole day with my mother with the maid and um, you know that is something that i used to feel that it's okay because you know my mother was also home she wasn't doing anything uh it used to give her something to look forward to that the children are coming and you know she would get busy in her whole days routine she would get busy with the kids and uh, that excuse to get out to be outdoors she would you know like the kids would be in the pram or then you know one of the kids would be playing in the garden um so that was an excuse for her to you know like do something with herself apart from just the household work and uh, so that was really good and uh, then uh, when my kids started becoming older and when they were going to school um <clears throat> at that time my father in law was uh, you know still alive and he used to pick and drop the kids in case i was not available to do that then uh, because i used to in fact live with my in laws only uh it had become a lot easier for me to actually leave the kids even at home so like there was never really a time that i would feel that oh my god i don't know what to do with my kids you know like uh, because of course if the kids are in a safe environment 
then I am comfortable to do whatever it is that I'm doing. All right. So has there been an unforgettable moment or event that you'd like to share with the viewers? I think unforgettable has to be every time I had a baby, you know, because it was just such an overwhelming experience. I mean, every single time has been, uh, uh, you know, quite unforgettable. And, and in fact, even the nurturing part has been very, very, uh, uh, you know, like um, uh, just an experience that, you know, you just cannot forget. Every time I go back to thinking about what it was, I'm, I just, you know, like, I'm like, oh my God, you know, like how did this all happen? And uh, so, yeah, it's, it's quite uh, unforgettable. All right. So Nadia, it feels really, you know, it's a very glad feeling that I have when I see successful women doing uh, things that they're already doing and then they come to our show. So, uh, you know, there's this thing, uh, World Humanitarian Foundation, that is our associated partner, and they work towards women empowerment. So this is the question from them. What are your views about women around the world? Well, I think women around the world, they all have, pretty much the same struggles. I think that we're all, we're all struggling the same way. We all have similar issues. Uh, we all have so much in common, you know? Um, and I think that we all want to achieve, you know, uh, something similar, which um, in certain parts of the world, they have perhaps achieved that more than our part of the world but I think the struggle is the same. So now that we are heading towards the end of today's episode of success stories and the name of our show is success stories so although you have already said what success means would you like to define it in a more wider term? I, I really can't I mean for me success is achieving what you have wanted to achieve and it really, I, I really don't think that there is any um, threshold of success. There isn't. I mean, you know, if you're successful at baking a cake that you wanted to bake that day, I mean, you know, you're successful. So that's an achievement and that's a success. And that gives you a lot of motivation to try something new the next time. So I really don't uh, measure success on, on any threshold. I feel that, you know, like the daily achievements, your daily uh, successes are something that you really need to keep in mind so that, you know, that is something that will give you that motivation to do more and to do better the next time. All right, Nadia, thank you so much for such a small and precise definition of success because, you know, we keep finding one thing after the other and we just keep, you know, getting into the rat race and we keep looking for success. And we just overlook the fact that success is right there in every small thing that we are doing. So thank you so yes. much for acknowledging that. Thank you. Thank and, you. And thank you so much for joining us today on this episode of Success Stories. And we're really glad that you could join us and tell us about your experience and about your journey. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Thank you. And thank you so much, everyone, for joining with us today on this episode of Success Stories. For more such stories, just stay tuned and subscribe to our channel so that you don't miss out on any new episode that we drop. So we drop our episodes every Monday, Wednesday and Friday. So until we drop the next one, just stay tuned, take care and stay safe. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.